Hi folks, hope you're okay today. It's good to be with you. We're looking at the topic seeking God. And I hope that this message uh, will be a blessing to you. So let's come before the Lord. Father God, we come before you today and we confess all our sin and all our failure today and all the weakness of our hearts and Father God we acknowledge how much we need you, how much we need your grace, how much we need your care, how much we need your love and we confess all our sin today. And Father God as we look at your word today we pray that you will bless it to our hearts those who do not know you, may they come to know you. Those who do know you, may they draw closer to you. We pray, Father, for the help of the Holy Spirit. May he come and minister to us now in Jesus' name. And seal it to our hearts, Lord. Amen. Okay, if you'd like to turn to your Bibles, and we're going to look at Psalm 63. Psalm 63, uh, reading from the King James Version, but any decent translation... New American Standard Version, New King James Version, etc. would be a good translation. But anyhow, we're just reading um, for convenience sake, because I just have happen to have the King James uh, on my desk today. So, Psalm 63. O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee, my flesh longeth for thee, in a dry and thirsty land, where there is, where no water is to see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name, and my soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches, because thou hast been my help, therefore, in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul followeth hard after thee, thy right hand upholdeth me. But thou, but those that seek my soul to destroy it, shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword, and they shall be portioned for foxes. But the king shall rejoice in God, every one that sweareth by him shall glory. But the mouth of them that speak lies shall be stopped. One of the big questions of life to ask is, who am I? What is your identity? Why are you here on this planet? And in the midst of life, as we ask those questions, it can seem difficult, and there can be difficult areas in our life, and our life can seem like a desert. For King David, he had to struggle with his identity and and had to struggle with a wilderness wilderness experience. He says in 2 Samuel 17, 29, hungry and weary, thirsty in the wilderness. Have you ever felt like that, hungry and weary, spiritually? Maybe you've become a top businessman or a businesswoman. But you're hungry and weary and thirsty in the wilderness. In other words, your soul is parched. You're wondering, who are you? What's it all about? What's the meaning? Or maybe you've lost your job and you're hungry and weary and thirsty in the wilderness. You're wondering, what is it all about? Who are you? For David, no matter what was happening in his life, and it was an up and down life, he he fought against Goliath, he was chased by King Saul, and he had rebellion by his own son. But in the midst of all his ups and downs, he always came back to God, like a, a pigeon. Pigeons can fly home even when they've been taken away from home for over 700 miles. 
they can fly 72 miles in two and a half hours and return home and in the midst of life when we are hungry and weary and thirsty in the wilderness we need to return our souls to God Dr. Billy Graham has said we are all crying out for guidance for comfort for happiness for peace we are all crying out for guidance for comfort for happiness and for peace and so David writes, O oh God, you are my God, early will I seek you, my soul thirsts for you, my flesh longs for you, in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. First question is, what is God like? You might say, well, God is the answer, but if, there is a, if he is the answer, who is he? Well, God is personal. David says, you are my God. David had a relationship with a personal God, a God who answered his prayers, a God who walked with him, a God who would hold his hand, spiritually speaking. Hebrews 11.6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. We have to have faith in God, faith in a person but God is personal secondly God is powerful and has all glory and Jeremiah 10 12 says he has made the earth by his power we very easily are willing to give pop stars all the glory but God deserves the glory for he is God Isaiah 6 1 to 3 in the year of King Uzziah died I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim, and each one had six wings, with the two covered his face, with the two he covered his feet, with the two flew, and one cried, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord, the whole earth is full of his glory. God is personal, but God is powerful, and God deserves all the glory, and then God is loving. David believed that God cared for him, that God took note of him. Keith Chambers says this, Well, I hear, here I was, 22 stone, roughy, toughy biker, on my knees, crying like a baby. I prayed, Lord Jesus, please forgive me. I am sorry. My life is yours. Please help me to live for you. Do with me what you want. And this biker came to know Jesus because he knew a loving God who would forgive him of his sins because of Christ dying on the cross for him. God is personal, he's powerful and he's loving. God is a real God. And so David says, O oh God, you are my God, early will I seek you, my soul thirsts for you, my flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Secondly, what can God do for me anyway? you might ask. You might say, I can get along in life okay, I, I don't need him. I'm not weak, I'm strong. You Christians believe in myths and you're leaning on a crutch. David was seen as a myth until recently they found a tablet with King David on. William Ramsey, a world-renowned archaeologist, said of Luke, a historian of first rank, William F. Albright, the world's greatest Old Testament orientalist studied, who studied the Old Testament and ancient culture, says, thanks to modern research, we now recognize its substantial historicity, that is to say, the Old Testament. Nelson Gluck, world-famous archaeologist, said, it may be stated categorically that no archaeological discovery has ever controverted a biblical reference. Dr. Oliver Bushwell says about the Bible is the very word of God. We are not dealing with myth. Oh no, we are not dealing with myth. We are dealing with historical facts. And then you say, well, it's all a crutch. Well, can you say David was a, a weak man? He was a warrior. 
He had a band of warriors and often fought against terrific odds. Was that the sign of a weak man? The Apostle Peter was hung upside down according to tradition and crucified. Was that the sign of a weak man? No, my friend, the issue is not with the Bible, but with our age. It is morally, spiritually bankrupt. One in twenty women are raped on our streets. Intellectually, we are bankrupt. We have followed the way of Nietzsche. After a lifetime of exploring the anxiety and anger and pain of human existence, his quest for dignity ended in sanity. And that is the way modern reason has gone. We have lost our reason. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 11, and indeed all was vanity. Without God and meaning in life, we really, if we're honest, intellectually should be nihilist. That is to say, there is no meaning in life. So we're in a morally bankrupt age and an intellectually bankrupt age. If you want to be truly satisfied, you will be satisfied if you meet with God. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst, says the Lord. St. Augustine says, desire only God and your heart will be satisfied. If you take drugs or drink, it will never satisfy you. John 7:37. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, of his heart will flow rivers of living water. The thing that will satisfy you most of all is the presence of God in your life. Galatians 5:22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, and long-suffering, kindness, and goodness and faithfulness. O oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you, my soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Well, the question might come, how can I know God? Well, if you want to learn about tennis, the best person to ask is a professional tennis player. If you want to ask about the soul, the best person is to ask is the best ex expert, and you could not have a better expert than the Bible. First of all, you've got to seek God with all your heart. Falcon Scott, in March 29th, 1912, said, We shall stick at it to the end. You will never know God until you stick at it, till you continue to walk and seek him. You might say, well, you people are Bible bashers, but you will never find God until you seek him. Jeremiah says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with your, what? Whole heart. And as you seek him, you must repent. That is to say, turn away from anything that displeases God and then have faith on Jesus Christ. Luke 18, 14, For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Faith in God. Faith is, is the same as resting on a chair. Imagine a chair with four legs. And you go there and you sit on it. You have put your faith that it will hold you. So you put your faith in Jesus that he is your saviour, that he died for you. One writer said about faith, faith is extending an empty hand to God to receive his gift of grace. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and contain of what we do not see. I remember being at seminary myself some years ago and we had these theological professors who were ripping into the Bible and I remember being in my room and literally my desk was piled up with about 10 maybe 15 or even more books trying to answer the questions of these theologians who were ripping into the Bible and I was answering them 
I was dealing with the answers one by one, knocking their arguments down. But in the end, I began to see that I'm not trusting and trusting an argument and trusting a person. And in the end, I have to trust God. I have to put my faith in him. And so it now, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. And as we put faith in God, we will begin to know God. It's kind of like a girlfriend or a boyfriend. You could analyze your boyfriend or girlfriend of whether the, you, you should love them or whether they should love you. But if they thought you was analyzing them all the time, they would be offended. At some point, you have to trust your girlfriend. You have to trust your boyfriend. And it's the same with God. And when we trust him, we put faith in the cross. You see, at the cross was a great exchange. You see, instead of you going to hell, there was a great exchange. Christ went to hell for you. When he was being nailed to that cross, he was being punished for you. In the Bible, in Isaiah 52, verse 5, it says, He was bruised for our iniquities. He was bruised for our iniquities. The Son of God was punished. He took your judgment for your sin. Stephen Massoud says this about Islam. Orthodox Islam, on the other hand, goes further and denies that Jesus was even crucified. Islam says that Jesus was not crucified, but the prophet Isaiah prophesied hundreds of years before Jesus was even born that he would die. It says he was bruised for our iniquities. And so Christ came and he died on the cross for your sin. In 1 Corinthians 22, 23, for Jews request a sign and Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified. The Son of God was battered black and blue for you. He died in your place. He was broken on your behalf. He took your punishment for your sin. See from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did dare such love and sorrow meet, all thorns compose so rich a crown. And if you believe in that, you'll be forgiven and washed and cleansed, and you will know God, and you'll have peace with him. O oh God, you are my God, early will I seek you, my soul thirsts for you, my flesh longs for you, in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. The pop singer Avi Lavie said this in conclusion. You are everything I wanted. You are everything I wanted. Are you disappointed today? Are you disappointed in life, as life not being what it should have been? Maybe as a young person at one time you had high hopes of being something great, but now as the years have faded, maybe in your 40s and 50s, things have not turned out as they should have been. You are everything I wanted. God is everything you ever wanted. You have achieved what you wanted to achieve when you meet your Saviour and God. He is a personal, powerful, loving God. Of a God of historical facts, not a myth. A God who is not a crutch to lean on, but a God to trust in a bankrupt age. Such a God can you can know if you are determined to seek him and repent and admit your wrong and to trust in him and look to the cross. In Luke chapter 15 verse 22 it says, And put a ring on his hand. And put a ring on his hand. You know the story of the prodigal son. The son says to the father, Give me my inheritance. He goes off. And he lives a, riot, lives a riotous life. But when he lives that riotous life, he realizes he's feeding, he, he runs out of money and resources, and he's feeding off the pigs' husks. 
and he's reduced himself to a pathetic life and then he goes back home and he thinks so maybe his father will reject him but no his father runs to him put a cloak around his finger and put a rings on him and says kill the fatty calf my son was lost but now he's found that's a picture of the love of God the ring on the finger and the robe round him is to say to the community that this is my son and he has an inheritance with me in that community if a son had said to their father give me my inheritance and gone off spent it and lived the debauched life and come back in that culture he would have been stoned he would have been beaten black and blue by the villagers because it was an offense to the family it insulted the father but in this occasion the father didn't do that the father didn't let the villagers stone him to death the father ran to his son and put a ring on his finger and put a robe round him and the same with you and me it says all fall short of the glory of God and God does not come to you and stone you to death and send you to hell he came and died on a cross for you and gave his life for you and he puts a ring on your finger and he puts a, a cloak around you and he says my son was lost but now is found he, he wants you to be his child he wants you to know that he is your father that you can be forgiven and cleansed today that is what you've been seeking all along as a businessman and a businesswoman that is what you've been seeking all along you who maybe are unemployed today and wondering what it's all about that is what you are seeking today as a young person ultimately you were meant for one thing and that is to know your God and he longs that you would come home to him and he longs that you would trust him and yes he will forgive you he will cleanse you you can trust him you can have peace with him you can know his love today all you have to do is confess your sin and acknowledge you're a sinner and believe that he died for you and you will be forgiven O oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Thank you for listening uh, to this sermon. And let's pray. And I would ask you to please come to know the Lord today and trust in him. Find forgiveness. Whether you're a believer, a backslider, or whether you don't know Jesus, come and know him and trust him today. Thank you for listening and God bless you. Father God, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for your love and grace, and we give you the praise, and we give you the glory, and we give you the honor. And Father God, I pray that you will bless this message to people's hearts. May they come to know you as the Lord and Savior. May those who do know you be refreshed and encouraged, and I ask this Lord Jesus Christ for your glory and for your honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. And I'll be doing uh, a few more sermons tonight. And uh, I'm just going to get a drink of water and I'll be back to do another one. So God bless you and have a lovely evening. If you're going to leave, if you want to listen to it, the next one, uh, just give me five minutes. I need to get some water. So God bless you and have a lovely day. Take care.